Art, you know him as Mr. Wonderful on Shark Tank, but Kevin O'Leary is also a markets pro, and he joins me now on set. Kevin, so great to see you. Welcome back. Great to be here. Thank you. Um, so you're also the chairman of O'Shares ETF Investments. You have yes. a slew of ETFs. Let's start off with your market outlook, because we've had a lot of negative events in the markets, right? Hurricanes, provocations from North Korea, and yet the 10-year yield has been coming down, the dollar index has been coming down, but stocks are up. They don't really react to this negative news. So what's going on here? Explain the resilience behind the stock market right now. I think what you're seeing is, you know, when we talk about, let's stay domestic for a moment, the devastations of these hurricanes, these series of, of storms that have come through, uh, and, and loss of life, which is horrific. On the other hand, the economic activity that happens in a place like Texas as a result of rebuilding and what's going to happen in Florida when this current storm goes through it is actually a stimulus to those economies as money pours in to rebuild. And, and so the other attribute that I think the market's fascinated with as of today, because you know we've gone through a, this horrific weekend in Florida, does this mean the Fed holds back in mm. September? Does this mean the Fed, when they're thinking this month towards the end of the year rate hike, my guess is there's more than a 50% chance they do nothing because raising rates now just makes it more expensive to rebuild. So if, if they're thinking about that or putting any stress on the economy as a result of a rate hike, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And I think the market senses that. That's one attribute for why it's resilient. And the other more fascinating one is the mid-cap, small-cap space has not participated in the recent rally, even though the dollar has been pummeled. But you've got to remember, small-cap stocks have about 100% of their revenue domestic. So they're not as exposed to currency fluctuations, and yet their earnings have been healthy and they haven't had their move. My guess is if there's any optimism in tax reductions for corporations, they're going to be the beneficiaries along with the S&P 500. So I'm sort of betting more on the mid-cap, small-cap story for the back end of the year as a result of setting up these, you know, these tailwinds for them that, we, that haven't, they, they haven't benefited yet. So, I'm anticipating that that arena of the mid-cap, small-cap domestic stock will outperform the S&P. Now, you're, you seem optimistic on the prospects of tax reform for the rest of this year, right? I mean, were you encouraged by the storm debt ceiling deal that Trump was able to put together? I mean, it seems like it was the storm that was the reason why this came together, and we're, we're now shaping up for an epic battle in December when we have that next debt ceiling deadline. I think Trump has got to the point in his, in his mandate where he wants to get things done. Mm -hmm. And you saw some evidence of that in, in, in this recent activity. I think the, the bipartisan nature of tax reform gives me a lot more optimism than I got on health care. The health care battle could go on for another year or so. But tax reform pretty well, I don't care what side of the, the seats you're on, people like it for their own constituencies and everybody realizes that the corporate tax domestically is not correct. It's just mm. not competitive. Mm. So I think if there's any optimism comes in for Q1, Q2, 2018, you'll see the benefit of it in the, in mm. the P expansion or at least the maintenance of optimism in the, in the equity markets. You know, with, with, the, with the 10 handle down at, at 2.0 almost, I don't, I'm not excited about fixed income right here. I'm still excited about equity. But the, the falling 10-year yield, I mean, traditionally that, that's sort of a warning sign, right? Because, you know, the bond market uh, shouldn't necessarily move so differently from the stock market. But what do you make of the falling 10-year yield? Uh, I think interest rates are, are low everywhere, and they have been for a long, long time. That, that There's been a decoupling around the, the flight to safety versus equities now for the last two years. I think what you can read into the two, you know, the, the decrease in the 10 years rate is a lot of people think the Fed is not going to move mm. because of the recent activities. You know, there's risk globally with the geopolitical issues around Korea, but also these, these whackings of uh, these storms. Mm. This is multi-billion dollar cost and the Fed doesn't want the country to pay more than it has to. That's my guess. And hurricane season is going, going on for another couple of months, so this could be right. just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, I, although to get category threes and fours hitting twice in a year, you got to go back a long time. Sure. And so it's a little rare. But what's happened in Florida, even though you know it's still horrific, was not as bad as people anticipated. Mm -hmm. Probably at least 50% less in damage costs mm -hmm. than anticipated. I want to shift now and talk about Apple. It's the largest holding in your OUSA ETF. We obviously have a big Apple event on Tuesday, and yeah. there was a leak over the weekend, and we now know the name of the new iPhone, the iPhone X. How damaging is this for the stock? Because there's a lot riding on this event. No, it's not damaging at all. I mean, I think you've really got three different models. So this is really going to be the event of the last four years for Apple. And it continues the development of the platform. My whole premise of investing in Apple, and always has been, is that 
the, the, you look at the software side of this, mm. the, the services business, yes. the incredible margins of that. Mm. If they were giving phones away, mm. it would be supportive of the services business. And so mm. they don't have to give them away because people want the brand, so that's a wonderful thing. But the truth is Apple is way past 10% of its revenue in services and continuing to grow. And the growth rate of the services business is paramount. That's what matters for the stock and it's right on track. I'm very optimistic for the rest of the year for Apple. I think this is going to be a huge event. Everybody's waiting to upgrade. Mm. And it gives them a really good edge with multiple models at different price points for global market share. And, but, yeah. and that's what, so every time you get a phone, you get an Apple phone, you have now an incentive to go into the services business, which sure. excite, excites me more than anything else. But still, the iPhone is king for Apple, and if the new one is reportedly going to cost $1,000 a phone, I mean, does that worry you that it could turn some people off? I and mean, who's going to pay that much? It's been the argument for seven years about the iPhone, that it's too expensive and that all kinds of competitors will come in, but you don't get access to the Apple platform without the iPhone. Believe it or not, I think people are going to go to plans again to mm. pay these things over two to three year periods and they're going to want the features. I, I, I haven't met anybody that doesn't want the new iPhone. Now, mm. how they pay for it is, a, is an issue, but the telco operators are going to be very accommodative because they know that locks them into plans and keeps them as users during, for 36 months and more. All right, well, I got my success. I'm going to be upgrading in a couple months. I knew you would. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin O'Leary, thank you so much. Thank you.